we are flooded in. And when I say flooded in, we are flooded in. That is our cow paddock. That is there. That is all river. And there is someone who has actually attempted to cross from the time we left last night, which is the water has not gone down at all. It's actually risen at least another 400 deep. I never what mind you, we had the spotlights on the cruiser out here and there was like GT swimming around the yard. Like this big what? chasing chasing bait, yeah. Shit. Old mate down six houses down, he actually got a salmon like that in the cast net swimming. He come out. Yeah, bud. Yeah, and then we even had cows walking down here. Ebony's like, shh, there's a cow. I was like, nah, you're not. And then surely enough, there's a cow walking down the road. Like through the water. What? So yeah, it's full on, man. Crazy. So I wish I was here just sitting here. I just could have I could have rebuilt my house with the stuff that was floating away. To be quite honest, I didn't really get any warnings on my phone. I'm with Optus, so I didn't get any warnings on my phone until um, later on through the day, but I was already had water coming in up on the corner of the street, coming in, and then, um, yeah, so I was running sandbags in other people's houses, helping um, uh, elderly people out, because um, there was a lot of people putting calls on Facebook if anyone can help throw some sandbags, and I was like, I've got a ute. It's got a snorkel, I've driven through water before. There was a uh, call out for an 80, 84 year old lady, and, um, Yes, I went over and uh, sandbagged her house and at the same time I met a couple of people on the way down. Just They were just randoms, or one I knew eventually. And how did you get there, drive? I drove through it, yeah, and I drove through about nearly 900 mils of water to get there. Um, and then when I dropped that off, uh, by the time I dropped it off, it had risen in 10 or 15 minutes, nearly another 500 mil. Um, yeah, it was rather deep, it was over my bonnet on the way back out. And then when I came back here, to make sure I had sandbags in my house and got my house all organised and everything like that um, to the best I could. Um, but I didn't think that the water was ever going to get that high. I thought maybe just come up the driveway a bit. Righto, folks, here we are at Oleander Street. I'm standing in the gutter and I'm up to my groin. It is flow. Run into this. About a young whippersnapper over here. Give me a hand. People you run into, eh? Now check that out. It's just roaring down. This is the main entrance into Holloways. Hey, thank God I got a snorkel. What else would you rather be doing at this time of year, eh? But um, yeah. And no warnings at all. Not not by then. Um, the only time I got a warning was after um, we ran out of sandbags and I decided to jump on the kayak and go for a look and just go and check on the people that I put sandbags in their houses because they, you know there was there were single old people by themselves. And there was, by then the power had been cut. Um, one of the ladies told me she didn't have a mobile phone, so there was, she was like totally uncontactable. Hi guys, Bear Grylls here once again. Uh, kayak mode now. And uh, I'm just cruising down Oleander Street in a kayak, would you believe? And uh, pretty unreal, but I'll show you. Get out in the middle, into the current. But. This is Oleander Street, hey? and I've just been checking on an older lady that I skated some sandbags to earlier, and uh, she is uh, A-OK -okay for now, and yeah, but pretty intense. This is the main street, Oleander, as you come in, that's how, just around the corner from the spa, and she is, she is that deep in the middle of the road. So it was like uh, up to my shoulders street when I just went around there just a second ago to go check on this other family that had been supposedly stranded on the roof but as I got there uh, it was a bit of a big mission hanging on to the palm palm trees as I'm trying to pull myself around the corners because the current's so strong but um, then SES rocked up so they've taken over there and I'm just floating back home and go have a look and see how much water's in my house again and then um, yeah it was like uh, really full on, um, checked on them, I even tried doing a rescue because someone said there was people sitting on a roof and I managed to get around there, that was over on Oak Street. The water was like up to my chin, um, but I couldn't even stand properly, I was actually getting pu pulled away so I was like hanging on fences, climb, like hanging off fences, climbing on um, palm trees and bushes to try and pull myself up and then when I got up far enough I swam across with the kayak and um, as I got there and I was getting them down, um, 
get them onto the canoe to help take them. There was two people and a kid, two adults and a kid. Um, and then SES managed to rock up at the same time. They come down, so we transferred them onto that. And then away they went. And then I went back around and checked on the, um, one of the old ladies again. And um, I pulled up in the middle of the river. Oh, it was definitely a river. River of Oleander Street now. And um, I was in water up to my waist doing a video to show people. And then I got a text message saying from the disaster Santa saying that, you know, you're, you're in a flood zone, brace yourselves. And I was like, uh, to be quite honest, no shit, I'm standing in water up to my chest. So it was like a little bit too late. You know, the warning should have came out like 12 hours beforehand, realistically. We did have flooding. We were flooded in the night before. Hi guys, once again, might well have a beer, but this is my front yard. Oh, that's my front yard. Yep. We have riverside views now. But. One of the other young fellas who was helping me um, did the sandbags. We got my other second kayak and we were swimming around and people were um, calling out if we could pick them up and take them to high ground. Yeah, we, that's what we did. We just kept moving around. As we were moving people from one section to high ground, people were calling out. So we were going back and getting them. And, and um, like, how many people did you rescue over this time? And dogs? Oh, I don't know how many dogs we did, but it was end up nine, about nine, I think it was 19 I counted. Yeah. Um, people? Yeah, just in my own kayak. Yeah, just, yeah. And I put them on the kayak and, you know, like it's too hard to um, have too many people in the kayak. So I ended up just had a rope around it and around my chest and walked them through. And um, yeah, I did have three people on the kayak at one time, but um, yeah. So it you was, were just walking through the water while dragging people? All yeah, like pretty much, kayak. yeah. Or I was even holding the kayak at some times because it was a little bit shady with the current. But yeah, like the current was ripping hard. Like even when it came down out of Oak Street and um, Maple Street, I'm back on the Oleander. That's where that major ha that that house got um, undermined and collapsed in half. It was roaring through there, and then it was just coming back down this way towards my house. And it's just the amount of one the water, but the power of the rip was just intense. Like, yeah, all my upper leg muscles were so sore, like they were burning. It was crazy. It was just like doing a full day's workout at the gym. Oleander. Jack's old place, Hickory, Jet Ski, Oleander, and we got the two blokes going around saving people's lives and checking people's dogs. So there's the old lady's house. There's a meter of water through that. And then this poor Ferrison's lost their whole front yard. Their house is snapped in half and it's roaring through. So. Yeah, this goes to show the power of Mother Nature and water, and lots of it. And then, yeah, so that's Bar Creek up there, still impassable. And, uh, yeah, but crazy. So, holy shit. Bear Grills reporting live Oleander Street. And how many hours were you out there? All day. <laughs> All day. All Just day. I think, I can't remember how long, what time I got back. It was late at night, must have been... 10.30, 11 o'clock, might have been 12, I've got no, no, no time frame because, you know, like my, I didn't have my phone on me the whole time. I did take it out a bit and then my phone went flat and it got wet and I couldn't charge it. So I was just like, oh, well, I'll just keep going out and doing what I can. And um, yeah, and that's what I continued to do. And then I was, um, I even had, my neighbours were fortunate enough to have, um, still have battery power on their phones and they're on the same community pages and they're like, Dan, there's someone over here. Can you go and have a look? So I was like shooting over to have a look. Like I've helped organise the, uh, the donation, the Santa, the donation hub. Um, we haven't had any support from any agency or anything like that. And uh, so I was fortunate enough to uh, um, get, a, get the unit or the vacant shop at, uh, at the shops at Holloway's Beach from the owners. Um, he's a top bloke too, he's only recently bought it and um, I've been caretaking it, doing the gardens as a landscaper and he just said you can have that shop, if anyone needs that shop you can have it for as long as you want and I was like oh sweet and then um, I got friends who are organising all the pickups over at Trinity Beach um, at the school there but because of all the legalities that have all happened and everything like that they can't have people coming on the school site so then we had to move all the uh, donations and they were going to move it to the yacht squadron and I just said hang on a minute we can make it work here and within two phone calls and 10 minutes I had a location and all we had to do was get the trucks in and uh, that was our biggest issue was getting the trucks in 
Um, it started coming in with four-wheel drives and all that, but we had to work with the, um, with the police on that one because they shut the highway off because there was a lot of sightseers the next day. So it was only local residents that could get in with in and out with their own local IDs. Once the donation started coming in, um, yeah, we started, I think it was about 9.30, 10 o'clock. We had that all, like we kicked off and by four o'clock in the afternoon, I already had one truckload dropped off, dropping it op and unloading another truckload. I'd had, um, I think I had 450 meals delivered in total. Yeah. They've all gone out. Uh, the support being from the community has been amazing, like crazy amount of people um, that have donated. Uh, we've got everything, like we've even got Christmas presents. We've had bikes dropped off in brand new boxes and everything like that. We've got towels, toiletries, we've got, you name it. We've got, basically what you have in your house right now is what is in the shop down here for people to come down and grab, which is all totally free. Um, I've still got people now dropping, um, dropping stuff off, even just randoms that are, uh, now they're allowed into the suburb, they're driving in and just pulling up and just dropping a couple of bags off or even just bottles of water. But yeah, so. That's really good. Now what about government council? Um, we well, haven't. Because you're the guy on the ground that everyone's talking to? Yeah, so um, things have been a bit chaotic over that. Um, one of the issues that we have had was, uh, I spoke to the Ergon boys because when they put power back on, um, we've got, because uh, it's a vacant shop and it's been vacant for so long, they all had to do their little politics about it and no one could actually put power on into the shop. So I had a mate, um, Heath O'Rourke, he's a Sparky, uh, he's a mate of mine who I've known from school. He came out last night, threw a generator in the back of my ute and put up some temporary lighting that I could run off the leads and all that sort of stuff so we could stay open to around 10.30 last night so people could cool, continue to come and grab stuff. But um, with everything else, is like uh, uh, there's been no support from agencies at all or any sort of government agency um, due to the fact that like uh, we need cleaning products. Um, that's the main thing. Like, um, if realistically, if this was a job site, no one would be allowed on it. I've got people here I've driven around and seen and the locals they're cleaning their houses with nothing but like shirts and thongs on, they haven't even got gloves. Some people haven't got anything at all. They've lost their whole house, it's washed out. It's washed down past everyone's houses and out in the ocean. So um, yeah, I hopefully um, after the few interviews that I've had and I've been pretty truthful and blunt and straightforward about it that uh, hopefully we get a few things happening, you know, like we should be getting big boxes of rubber gloves and not just like the food grade. We need like the big yellow rubber gloves. We need boots. We need PPE basically and like brooms, squeegees, wheelbarrows, um, you know, like everything that's happening right here right now is all community. Like even the mud squad, like they had the going around the mud muscle squad. Um, yeah. And it's been pretty intense, but like yesterday we started getting water. So now people can actually start cleaning houses. Um, some places have got power, so it's even better. You know, we can get pressure washers in there. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get more, you know, like we've got local like hardware stores. We even spoke to Bunnings and Bunnings were quite happy to jump on board and give us some stuff, but there's absolutely no stock. Um, so that's one of the other big issues as well. So yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah. What it's, do you hope for things to move forward from here now? I just supplies, realistically. Um, you know, like I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing and, and helping coordinate, um, you know, with the, with the donation hub and, and running it at the moment. I've got uh, the support of three other girls, you know, I've got the two Renees and Jenna from the, uh, the, 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 the Flood Foundation. Um, yeah, uh, they've been, you know, they're the ones who've organised all the gear. I've just been the middleman just to get, like, organise a spot and get it here and and get the word out. And then I've also been sharing them on local sites um, with Machen's Beach and Holloway's here. Um, I believe that Yorkies Knobs got a centre over there and they're getting their own, um, you know, distribution side of things. Haven't really, I've, all I've heard is that Machen's is pretty much destroyed. Um, yeah, so there, some parts are even a metre, um, they were a metre higher than what we were here. So like people's houses must have been like to the roofs in some sections, you know. So like I've been to one house there and there's like, it's the water level was as high as, as, high as my head, you know, and that's about 1.7, 1.8 metres. So yeah, it's just unbelievable. Um, the people- The loss is massive. <clears throat> oh, it's like, if you would not, if you, were, if you weren't here, it, you cannot explain to actually, to, to identify actually how intense it was like 
you know, like watching the, uh, like I watched the Lismore floods from, from the TVs and I was blown away by that. But for it to actually happen here, and we're like on a big open level area, there's like the mountains are in the distance and all that. That's just, it's, it's just totally unbelievable, you know, and the way it came up and everything like that. So, um, yeah, it's, and so I don't even know how, I haven't, you can't even got words to say it. But the only one thing I am grateful is, is that the, uh, the esplanade where the bank eroded away, that was definitely the, uh, the, the, the saviour of Holloway's Beach when that went out, because as soon as that went out, I had water running out of my house within 20 minutes. And then within, within 10 hours from that, all of Holloway's Beach was dry. You know, the rains had slowed down, but um, all that water was backing up over that side. It was creating a damn wall in the bush there. And then when all that let go, like all the trees went, it just opened up a huge channel because it's like 10 metres deep and it's, I don't know, 60, 80 metres wide and it just went all out in the ocean there. Jesus. Same as thing as what we got over the other side here in Bar Creek, so all the water just separated and went. So yeah, here we go. And, um, yeah. Holy! They're definitely dead, but wouldn't touch them. Mm. Holy shittery! Yeah, as you can see, she's pretty wild, eh? Power of Mother Nature. Chaos when you go down there and you, you know, you see all the destruction and everything like that and you see how high it is. And especially now, it's even more impacting when you actually see how people's whole houses have been stripped out yeah. and the kitchens and all, they're all sitting, everything they own is out the front of their house in a pile, you know? And it's, yeah, it's just crazy. Like, I'm fortunate enough, you know, I had five inches of water through my house. You know, like there's two houses on, on my street that actually had water come in and I had to be the second one obviously but um, you know that's the least of my worries at this present stage um, yeah it's just you know everything's dry I pulled everything out that was wet um, yeah now we've got power oh I haven't got power yet I'll have power later hopefully <coughs> but um, I've got running water and when I turned the tap on the other day and I actually had running water because I heard that was water going around Holloway's Beach yeah. you know the simple things in life you take for granted hey you know, like I've been jumping in the pool, one of my neighbours' pool with a cake of soap, washing myself. It's, yeah. you know, it's pretty full on. It is. Check this out. There's our neighbours. This is our street. Oh, bloody hell. Welcome to Far North Queensland, they say. It'd be beautiful, they say. Let's have a 120 year old flood, they say. Woo, Merry Christmas, motherfuckers. Just real quick, where did the uh, bear grills come from? Oh, that was just my own personal thing that I was just you know doing my own little blog and if, if it did get leaked out to the media or whatever you know like at least they couldn't identify me but i think with all the impact and everything like that now has happened a lot of people have heard about it and then yeah so then i was doing my own one video for my own personal blog to tell people because like the media says things that are happening and not happening i've had so many people ringing me from overseas and also down on the bottom of australia um, you know, and I'm saying, well, this is actually how it's happening, you know, like, this is how it's happening. We are safe, like, especially with the cyclone. I had people ringing me saying we're going to get ripped out of our houses and we're going to drown in the ocean and all that sort of stuff. But the floods were definitely the worst over it all there. But, um, yeah, it was just a, just a kickoff and, you know, a bit of a joke around trying to, you know, still be positive about the whole situation and, exactly. and all that. And, yeah, I did it and I've got so many of my friends, um, they're all just like, we're so grateful you've been doing that because then we've actually seen the impact on how it's been. Exactly. And then especially um, the ones that couldn't get in here, I've even had people, uh, friends that went out that night and they haven't been home until today or yesterday. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, so now everyone knows about it sort of thing. And yeah. uh, maybe the nickname will stick, but uh, oh well, you know, Bear grills. And <laughs> you know, I'm not eating any witchy grubs or drinking my own urine. Thank God we got water on. It could have been that bad. Could have been that bad. <laughs>